All right. Good evening and welcome to the candidate forum hosted by the League of Women Voters of DeKalb County in partnership with WNIJ. My name is Kate Williams and I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of Illinois and I live in McHenry County so I can't vote in your race. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that neither supports or opposes candidates or parties for any office. The League's purpose is to promote political responsibility through an active and informed citizenry in an interest in government. Providing this forum allows candidates and to become better, in, excuse me, it allows citizens of DeKalb to get better informed about the issues facing their community and the candidates running for office. The League of Women Voters is not responsible for the accuracy of statements that the candidates make tonight. Questions are from the League and community members, and they've been collected before the forum and were screened for duplication, clarity, and appropriateness to the office being discussed. The candidates have not been provided the question before this forum. The candidates have agreed to some ground rules that no voice, images, or other duplications of the forum can be used in any campaign literature or advertising. This forum is among three candidates seeking a position for Ward 5 of the DeKalb City Council. By participating in this forum, all candidates have agreed to abide by the rules set forth prior to the forum. This race has one or more write-in candidates. To vote for a write-in candidate, you must bring the candidate's name with you, write it in the blank space, and fill in the oval. This forum is going to be available on several WNIJ platforms, including Facebook Live. I've been asked to announce that WNIJ reserves the right to mute people who do not follow WNIJ's social media policy. Each candidate will have a one minute introductory statement in an order set by alphabetical by the last name. Then the questions will be asked and the candidates will have one minute to answer in alternating order. And then closing statements will be one minute as well. An electronic timer will be used and candidates are asked to strictly adhere to the time limits. Candidates, when the timer reaches zero, certainly finish your sentence, but then you must stop. So let us welcome tonight, Scott Adams, Thomas Riley, and Derek Vanderbeer. So turn on your cameras and microphones and let's get started. Hi, thanks for having us. All right. Hello. All right, good, we're back in. All right, we'll start with opening statements. Scott, one minute. Hi, my name is Scott McAdams and I'm running for re-election as fifth ward alderman. This is my first term as fifth ward alderman and I would appreciate the opportunity at a second. There, at no time since before the Civil War has aggregate wealth in DeKalb increased so quickly. With the rise of Chicago West and the revitalization of downtown, we are heading in the right direction. Bridges are being repaired and streets like First and Taylor through the heart of the Fifth Ward have been improved. We wanna work diligently to transform the Annie Glidden North area into a vibrant, welcoming neighborhood because there's a real sense of connection now in DeKalb. Neighbors are taking pride in their communities again and it's an exciting time to be in town. I appreciate your opportunity to speak at this forum and thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Thomas, one minute, opening statement. Yes, my name is Thomas Riley. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, war veteran, Vietnam. I've lived in the city of DeKalb for 22 years. and I've always been a likable person and actually talked with everyone that's, that I've bumped into. Uh, not a whole lot to say. I'm not really a political person, but I am a, an active Republican. So I try to voice my opinions on the Republican Party, but I also listen to Democrats as well. So I'm like a, a two-person uh, politician. Uh, I don't know a whole lot else that I can say. All I know is that I love this city and I'd be happy to... to to be a part of it on the city council. Thank you very much. All right, 
Garrett. First, I want to thank the League of Women Voters and WNIJ for hosting this debate. Every day I hear people disappointed in our current leadership, whether it's wasting taxpayer money, disre disrespecting our neighbors, or selling our senior community center right out from under them. Enough is enough. You can measure a community by how it treats its most vulnerable groups, children and seniors, and we are failing them. I watched as dozens of people showed up to city council begging to keep a building they consider home. And I watched as Scott and every other member simply ignored their concerns and signed the death warrant for the community. And why? To help build a drive through it's not right. We deserve better than Scott and his failures. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we'll start with the questions now. All right, and we'll start with uh, Thomas. First question, what are the most pressing infrastructure improvements needed in the city and how can you pay for them? How can we pay for them? Well, we have a lot of many big businesses that are moving into DeKalb, which is, is really helped the infrastructure as well. And we have uh, new um, affordable apartments to bring, bring the people into DeKalb that are working in this area. Uh, I don't know a whole lot else I can say at the time. <laughs> you kind of hit me on the spot there, but so sorry. All right, good. Eric? Yeah, I think the most pressing infrastructure project, and it's been for a number of years, and the current leadership has completely ignored it, is uh, roads and sidewalks and public safety uh, is also. And, and I think it's uh, when to, to pay for that cost is to stop these stupid pet projects that they keep approving and wasting uh, taxpayer monies on inflated salaries for city staff. Thank you. All right, thank you. Scott, what are well, the most pressing uh, infrastructure improvements? Right now we're repairing two bridges in the fifth ward. Uh, one, uh, both of them in the north, uh, uh, of the, the northern part of the ward. And we've got about $6.5 million being spent. Um, most of that coming from the federal government. We also uh, upgraded First Street and Taylor Street to the tune of about $1.2 million and they look great. And we're happy to continue to work on the roads. I know we have a lot of ancillary roads that need to be addressed. We have millions of dollars in projects that need to be caught up from years of neglect. And we look forward to spending uh, the time and the energy to make sure that that's done in the next term. All right, second question, and we'll start with Derek. What's your opinion of extending Metra service to DeKalb? I think it's a great idea, but unfortunately it won't happen anytime soon. In 2015, there was a, a exploratory committee made up of the various mayors, mayors in the, the county. And they talked in this meeting, they talked to, I think four representatives of Metra, three from Uni, Uni, Union Pacific. And the, num and the numbers were, it's gonna cost between 400 and $500 million. And yet the city presented their thing in the last couple of days of uh, 80 to 100 million. But it's, it's just not a local issue. It's, it's, it's a countywide issue because when you wanna bring Metro in, you also have to include a tax and it's a countywide tax. And currently in the border communities, it's 0.75%. So on top of our existing sales tax at 8%, it'd be 8.75%. You need to actually have the statute changed because right now the, the uh, counties that make up the metro are defined in the statute. So it's going to take some additional effort. And so the $100,000 that the city just approved for the study is wasteful money. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Scott, opinion of extending metro service to DeKalb? I'd be excited to bring it to DeKalb, and I know the residents are very anxious to have it. I think uh, we are in competition with uh, universities like Illinois State University, and they have metro service to normal. And so if you're a suburban kid and you're looking at the two universities, Northern Illinois and Illinois State, if you want a university that you can attend and take the train, you're gonna pick Illinois State over Northern Illinois University. And so we're spending money to find ways to make it happen. 
We have resources at the federal and state level, and we have very cooperative, cooperative help from our partners in both of those areas. And I'm looking forward to uh, the exciting possibility that the train could come to DeKalb in the near future. All right, and Thomas. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, I agree with everything that Scott said. Uh, as far as Mr. Van Buren, uh, it seems like all I'm hearing really now are, are more negative thoughts and we need to reach in a positive direction, not a negative direction. So I think it's important that, that the city of DeKalb and the residents around the, the area do get this opportunity to have Metro come in. All right, thank you. Next question, and we'll start with you, Scott. Okay. When trying to attract new businesses to the area, how much attention should be in paid to environmental concerns? New business, environmental concerns. Major attention should be paid to this topic. It's a super important topic because we're talking about the long-term viability of our planet, which is super important and must be addressed. I was very proud when our partner Facebook built all sorts of solar farms in order to support the data center. And I'm excited to take a, our city in that direction. Uh, I will always approve solar farms. Uh, I'm a big fan of wind energy. And I think that um, that's the, way, the wave of the future. So we have to bring that into it then to, uh, to the attention of the, the policymakers. All right, good, thank you. Thomas, when attracting new businesses to the area, how much attention should be paid to environmental concerns? Well, I agree with Scott on the solar, but not on the wind. Unfortunately, wind farms require mechanical uh, upkeep. And I just don't think it's really good for like the birds that are flying by, uh, the geese going north and south. They have a tendency to hit those blades. Uh, as far as, as uh, the environmental, I'm, I'm an environmentalist. Uh, I'm a, a avid gardener. So I think it's important that we, we do the best we can with the environment safely. All right, great. Derek? It's actually sort of a fun question for me to answer because when my dad was mayor, he went out to Robert Redford's ranch uh, resort and to a, for an environmental conference. And that opened up my father's eyes quite a bit to what should be done uh, for in government and everything else to try to uh, reduce uh, climate change and impact on environment. And I'm a firm believer in that. I think anything that we can do to increase the adaptability of businesses to reduce uh, carbon footprints, uh, environmental concerns is a, is a very positive direction to take. And I think it's even the rail, we need to be concerned with the rail, especially what's been happening in Ohio with the derailments. So it, it's just not building new, new businesses, it's also helping old businesses convert their existing sites to be more environmentally friendly. Thank you. All right. All right, our next question. What's your vision for the role of affordable or moderate housing in DeKalb? And what would you do to help support that? Thomas, we'll start with you. A vision for more affordable or moderate cost housing. Well, I there's one thing I don't want and that's low income housing because that seems to bring crime to the areas. Right now we have wonderful um, apartments, buildings that are already in place and that's attracting a lot of the a lot of people from the the large companies that are actually here in DeKalb now. So that's what we're trying to do is bring people out here rather than everybody going back into St. Charles or Geneva. Uh, it's fairly affordable right now, I believe. Uh, and even some of the, the uh, um, landlords are doing quite well. And I think they're, they're doing their job to keep, keep prices down. All right, good, thank you. Derek? Well, I think it uh, starts with building codes. You know, we need to be able to adapt a building codes to maybe introduce new type of materials that can reduce the co cost of construction. 
or rehabilitation of existing buildings. Uh, so you, you can also change city code to provide additional monetary incentive, incentives for conversions uh, to reduce the cost. And I think some of it is alternate power supply because that's really the, is one of the things that's really driving now the cost of housing is the cost of utilities, natural gas, electricity, prices are going up. So I think it's just a whole combination of things to look at of how to reduce costs for people. Um, and also then it goes into uh, food. You know, food cost drives into the household budget and I would, I would include that into the affordable housing. It's, it, we want people, and to say that low-income people are bad people or bring in crime, that's, that's false. There's some very All right. good people. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Scott, vision for affordable or moderate-cost housing in DeKalb? Well, I agree with Derek that saying that low-income housing is not uh, desirable is uh, not correct. The Annie Glidden North Project uh, envisions quite a bit of low-income housing. Uh, subsiding right next to uh, medium and high-end housing. And we spent a uh, million dollars and helped negotiate a deal to get, uh, to get rid of Hunter properties. And they, the owner of uh, what was Hunter is now in the process of renovating those buildings and will be bringing new affordable housing to the area and, and higher quality living for those folks living in those homes. And so we want to make the community affordable and available to everyone, regardless of what they make. And we want to make sure that everyone stays in a safe building uh, and has a good standard of living. All right. Last question. Besides infrastructure, what are your two priorities to focus on with the city council? We'll start with you, Derek. Well, I sort of lumped them together. It's, it's uh, transparency. And I think you achieve transparency by providing accurate and reliable data to the citizens of DeKalb. And this is where I think the city has really fa fa failed. And it's with the Metro study that they did for $100,000 when they neglected to inform us of what, happened, what was going on in 2015 and that it's gonna require a referendum by the DeKalb County to pass something because it's a change in sales tax. So, you know, they keep harping about all this, but it's, all, it's open and transparency. And unfortunately, city council, especially Scott, because he sat on, on a couple OMA violations, Open Meeting Act violations as determined by the public assets committees for having illegal conversations. So it's, it's, it's open transparency, being truthful to the people and then putting in the mechanisms to measure results, which they don't have now. Thank you. All right, Scott. Well, when I talk to voters, they tell me that their taxes are too high. And so one of the things we have to focus on is getting that property tax rate down. And it's not just the city of DeKalb that needs to lower its rate, it's all the taxing bodies. And so one of the efforts that we've been making is to communicate with the taxing bodies that if all of us lower the rates, we will increase investment in the area. So that's my first priority. And the second priority to address, I would assume would be economic development. Uh, every time we bring in a new building in Chicago West, the EAV goes up about $80 million, which is an investment in the city of a colossal measure. And so every time we as a city council present ourselves in public, we have to make sure that we're presenting ourselves as attractive to investors. Um, the negativity, the griping, the complaining, all of that drives away investment. So it's very important in the role as city council member that you present a positive face on the city of DeKalb because you are a part of the sales staff to bring investment here. And so this- right. uh, Thank yeah. you. All right, and Thomas, top two priorities to focus on in the city council. Well, to be honest with you, I've been to most of the city council meetings and I have to say they're excellent. It's a great team, and I don't know why Derek thinks that uh, it, they're not doing that well. I mean, even uh, Bill Nicholas, the city manager, has actually moved mountains to, to help us go forward. So that's my only concern, uh, that if I were to be on the city council, I think we'd do well 
and that's that's about it. I mean, like I said, I'm not really a, a politician to speak of, but I'm an average person that just cares about the city. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that's the lightning round. And so now we're uh, coming to our closing statement. So one minute, we'll start with you, Derek. Well, first of all, thanks, Kate, for moderating this, this uh, discussion. This is ele election is about leadership and about finding someone willing to work for the entire city and not just for themselves. DeKalb is a great place to live, a great place to work, a great place to raise a family. That's why I'm so proud to have watched my father, Frank Van Buren, serve as mayor. Why I'm so proud to have graduated from DeKalb High School and NIU and NIU College of Law. I know we can get our city back on track, provide our residents young and old. And I want to do that with your help. I'm Derek Van Buren, a son of DeKalb, and I'm asking for your right and vote on April 4th. Thank you. And thanks again, Kate. All right, thank you. Thomas, one minute closing statement. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Kate uh, and everyone out there who's listening, like I said, I'm a Republican, but I'm also a, a Vietnam veteran. And DeKalb has become a veteran town, which is unbelievable. Uh, the veterans that I see all the time are just, just open. I, I do honor guard funerals to respect our uh, fallen uh, veterans. And we have several uh, shrines, so to speak, of around DeKalb uh, for the veterans that will actually bring Oh, we're losing you a little bit there, Thomas. Oh. Did, I, did I, am I going too far the wrong way? Yeah, there yeah. we go. Got to go ahead. So anyway, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll just let you <laughs> see me for who I am. And, and I just enjoy the city of DeKalb and it's, it's who I want to serve. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, our time's up for this forum. Your participation as a candidate and as a voter is, is essential to preserving freedom and our country. For more information, please visit the nonpartisan website, illinoisvoterguide.org, where a recording of this forum will be posted on each of your candidates' pages. Remember to vote on or before April 4th we thank the candidates, the Voter Service Committee, and WNIJ for organizing this. And do Katie, remember- I hate to interrupt, but I hadn't got an opportunity to speak my final Oh, part. Scott, I am so sorry. I was making check marks. Please, one minute. How embarrassing. No worries, no worries, no, wor no worries at all. I, I just wanted to say that in 2017, I suffered a stroke. And my doctor told me you have to walk three miles a day, no matter what, whether it rains, snow, whatever, you gotta get out there. And it was about a mile and a half from my house to the library. So every day I would walk through DeKalb through what, what I didn't know at the time was, but now I know it's the fifth ward. And I fell in love with DeKalb. The neighbors are warm and friendly. People would wave from their house when they'd recognize me. And as I made my walk and as I recovered from that stroke, I really wanted to do something to help the city. And it's been my honor and my privilege to serve as the alderman. I'd appreciate your vote on April 4th. I'd like the opportunity to serve again. If you think we're doing a good job and you want us to continue the momentum, give me a vote and I'll be happy to carry on. Thank you. Great, I apologize. I made one too many check marks. It happened. And again, thank you very, very much for attending this. Good night. Good night.